the predicted radius of the proton I did in 2012 has now become the standard value uh, for co-data. And uh, I think that's really important. People should know that like co-data is the standard for all measurements and constants in physics. That's what you know all physicists on the planet use to do their calculations with. And you know, so if you want to know, you know, any of the constants, the exact number to the level of exactitude that we were able to either measure it or output it from theory or so on, you go to CoData and you get that number and you get, you know, the numbers and the sigmas, you know, that like basically how precise it is and so on. And um, until, um, in, uh, in the last few months of 2019, experiments were done that confirmed the mu muonic measurement of the shorter radius, the proton, which had initially confirmed my theory, um, you know, uh, but there was still some question about, well, why is it only coming out at that radius when it's done with muons, which are heavy electrons, instead of normal ways with the electronic normal way of the electron. Um, and then experiments were done that were more precise with the standard, um, you know, electronic way uh, using electrons. And they confirmed the muonic radius, which confirms my theory. Um, and so um, that became most likely because CoData has not yet put a reference on why they've changed the radius of the proton, but I, I assure you that that's a very, very big step for science and physics that the radius of the proton would have been changed like this because as it is becoming the standard, it is the standard, uh, you know, the standard model does, is no longer so standard, meaning uh, the standard model has problems. Um, now, with some of its calculations, um, mainly Q QED and QCD, and um, I, you know, there's many physicists around the world that have been saying that, like, these two theories, um, these two parts of the standard model needed, need updating, and uh, one deals with the electromagnetic fluctuations at the quantum uh, scale and the other one with the strong force um, and uh, both of those things um, which uh, you know have to do with uh, certain constants in physics that are important um, um, are extra can be extrapolated very precisely from the holographic mass solution but not from the standard model the standard model you know and, and these constants are very, very well measured. Um, so it really, uh, it's really important, you know, step that the standard proton radius or the codata value has been updated to the new value. And that confirms the holographic mass solution, which is basically, you know, has application directly into QED and QCD. It, it's just that, um, these, uh, these theories um, are based on uh, a certain technique, mathematical technique, that has to do with, um, um, you know, basically, uh, you know, computing certain um, values from, uh, you know, approximations um, that are run in series that is like that gives us uh, it's called perturbation theory that gives us accuracy but doesn't give us a good understanding of the mechanics like why is these mechanics like there's no foundation for the mechanics there's a lot of pre-parameters to make those calculation happen so there's a lot of assumptions that have to be made and basically what we found with the holographic mass solution when we scaled it up all the way to the universe with all the stuff in between is that perturbation theory can actually 
be more precisely described in terms of fractal iterations of, of, uh, of values in an equation that, you know, I don't want to get into much details, but basically um, it's really good that it got updated at CoData. And it, I think it, it um, I'm really excited to like publish this next level of mathematics to, uh, to help continue to shape the theory uh, or define the theory more clearly and scale it across the whole universe.